Just like you would measure the distance between a point A and a point B in meters, in music we can measure the distance between two notes using tones. More precisely, we're going to measure that distance in half tones and whole tones. Quick note, the term tone is commonly replaced by the term step. So if you notice that I'm saying half step or whole step, I'm talking about the same thing basically. The half tone or half step refers to the distance separating two notes being next to one another. So if I take this note here, for example, the note being right next to it, so those two notes, they're being just next to one another, the distance between the two is one half step. So that's one half step. The same goes for the note that's also on the left. So those two notes are just next to one another and the distance between the two is one half step. Let's see it from this note now. At the left of it, the nearest note is this one. So the distance between the two is one half step. But now, if we look at the right of it, we have another white key. And in that case, the rule stays the same. That note being just next to that note, the interval between the two is still one half step. So that's for the half step. The other one is called the whole step. Simply enough, a whole step is the addition of two half steps. So again, let's take this note. If I go above that note by one half step, I'm getting here. If I add another half step to that, so one half step above this one, the note right next to it is this one. So I have those two notes. The distance between the two is one whole step. Two half steps equals one whole step. Another example, let's take this note. The note next to it, uh, going on the left, is this one. So that's one half step. If I do it again, I get here, so the distance between the two is one whole step. So in general, the half step is when you see two notes right next to each other. So this is a half step, a half step, a half step, a half step, and finally also a half step. And the whole step is when you see two notes separated by another one. So that's a whole step. You have this note in between. That's a whole step. This note is in between. That's also a whole step. This note right here is in between the two. And finally, those two are also separated by one whole step. Okay, now that we went through the tonal structure, we can understand better how to name the black keys. Remember, I said that the keyboard is arranged on a pitch. When you go on the left, you tend to go lower in pitch. And when you go on the right, you tend to go higher in the pitch. Well, we're going to take that knowledge and apply it over the tonal structure. For instance, if we're moving up in the pitch by one half step, so we're going to the right, that movement is called a sharp. And the symbol for that is just like the hashtag. Going to the left, that one is called a flat, symbolized by this tiny B that you can see at the left of your screen. Now, the black keys that you see on the keyboard will always be named from the perspective of the white keys being around them. What does it mean? 
If you take C, for example, and raise it by one half step, so going up in the pitch to the right, by one half step, we get here on that black key. So that movement is called a sharp. So landing on that note from C, going up on that black key, that black key will be named C sharp. Okay, C sharp. Moving up by one half step. But that same black key also has another name to it. Let's take D and do the opposite movement. So going down on the page, down a half step from D, we get on the same black key. So we're going down a half step, it's called a flat. So we have D flat, okay? So that same key, depending from where you see it, is a C sharp, C sharp, or a D flat, D flat. The logic will be the same for all the remaining black keys. So we have for this one, D and E. We have D sharp, so that's a D sharp. And it's also an E, flat. Okay, so D sharp and E flat. Moving up. For this one, around that black key, we have F and we have G. So that's F sharp or G flat. Next one, we have that black key. And just under that black key, we have G and we have A. So going up to the right from G, we have G sharp. Going down on the left from A, we have A flat. And for the last one, we have A and B. Going up from A, a sharp and from B to get here we have to go down so that's B flat okay now we have to address two special cases you will notice that for E and F and also for B and C there's no black keys in between and those two are separated by one half step. Based on the logic that we've just learned, if we raise the note E by one half step, we get here. So that F should be called E sharp. And by opposition, if we take down F by one half step, that same E becomes F flat. That's technically correct, but since those notes already have a proper name, we're simply going to stick to that. So that note is an E, and that one is an F, regardless of where you see it. It goes the same for B and C. Great, you're now able to correctly name every single black and white keys there is on a keyboard. In the next part, we will learn about the two most commonly used scales in Western music.